for Brian's Lunch Truck. And now here's your host, Brian Moots. All right. Hey, this is Brian, Brian's Lunch Truck Radio on CarpentryValleyRadio.com. And today's guest is Monica Solorzano, uh, Council District Number 1 representative, and she... She's been fantastic. It's been fantastic talking to her. And uh, quick, just say a few words about yourself. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me on. Um, as I mentioned to you, this is definitely outside of my comfort zone. So I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. It's always good to challenge yourself. <laughs> now, for, first of all, we've got the name. Let's get the name issue okay. <laughs> taken care of. <laughs> I always appreciate anybody who tries, and, and you both tried, so that's that's really good. So, um, <laughs> Are you saying no, we did not he, succeed? He no, no, you have succeeded. Oh, actually. yeah. Brian yeah. gave the 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 um the pronunciation that we've all thought was it. That's not it. <laughs> We're not sure. I, was, I, I apologize, but it's important. That's your name, and you want to be addressed. Yeah. So it's it's not Manica. No, definitely not. No, although that's usually what I'm yeah. called. Some version of that. And then you, oh, you wouldn't want to hear. I was telling friends about today's show, and I was all over the map. So <laughs> I apologize right there. So it's Monica Solorzano. So it's Monica Solorzano. Solorzano. Yeah, there's a, there's Solorzano. accents in there to kind of yes, guide the way when, if you look yes. at it in a written. But yeah, I pre- no, I appreciate that. And please forgive me and, and no, for any mispronunciation. It's not no. Uh, ill will intended yeah. at all so you know and so tell us you're now first term council member yes and how is it for you i'm really liking it the the parts that i like about it are some of the parts that i didn't anticipate liking which is just there's so much information there are so many issues and i just even the ones that i initially thought maybe wouldn't capture my interest there's always some angle to them that makes them that makes me st- feel passionate about them have you Discovered that you might be a policy wonk. <laughs> well, I mean, the, my my background is it kind of goes a little bit in that direction. So um, I think I was kind of maybe setting myself up for something like this one day, even though I never really well, now anticipated you, it. Now you just cracked the door open. What was your background? <laughs> Um, well, so my first job out of college was with um, a congressman, Javier Becerra, uh-huh. uh, yeah, who's now moved on to, he's director of health and human services. Um, so I was a staff assistant for him, which is just like the lowest rung Still. on the ladder. Wow. <laughs> and it was out in D.C., so that was a really good experience. I was there for about two years. Um, and then after that, I went and I got my master's in education. And then um, I started working at UCSB, and I've been there for 17 years now. Wow. Oh, fantastic. And what do you do at UCSB? Uh, Initially, I was in the Office of Government Relations for about, uh, Government and Community Relations for about 15 years, um, and now I work for the Academic Senate. So I staff faculty committees on disciplinary issues. Uh, So does that mean, I'm going to ask, because I used to be, since I was a shop steward and on the executive board of the Teamsters, I've been Mm -hmm. to several hearings, disciplinary hearings on a kind of higher level. Does that mean you find uh, the people necessary, the knowledge for a particular case? So it means that any complaints that come in that are um, either either if a faculty member has a grievance or somebody is making a charge against a faculty member, that would the first stop would be my my position, and then I would talk with the complainant and the respondent and and really make sure that we're taking all the correct procedural steps uh, to follow the policy, and then create an ad hoc committee that does a little bit of further investigation and and eventually um, ho- hopefully not have to go to a hearing, but that could be a, a that final. That could be it. You're right. Yeah. So you're the, you're basically the first step. Yes. Exactly. And we yeah. will want we want to get to the city council <laughs> thing, but this is fascinating because um, I want to find out. And you've done this for how many years? Well, actually, only two years okay. now. Yeah. So um, I was going to ask you learning. if you notice a change of complaints over the years, but I don't know if you have in that short period. Of yeah. Time. No, I probably wouldn't have yet the track record to to say um, about that. But the, the UC has a new abuse of conduct policy that's system wide, and I think that's a reflection of kind of the bigger social cultural currents that are, are looking at issues. Right. like bullying and, and just uh, treatment of of um, subordinates and of colleagues um, in ways that are, I think, really important to Something consider. that you and I, Dennis, never, was never considered important, being bullied or being a bully. <laughs> <laughs> I was never bullied at school. So. Oh, no, 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 I was. Were, were you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, a, I was like a nice, I was a, I was a protector. Oh. I, in fact, I, I remember protecting, and I said, I guess because I was a big kid, mm-hmm. A uh, guy named Aaron, and you know he was bullied, so I come in to help him out, and I'm always really sensitive to that. I needed your phone number in seventh grade. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. Yeah, well, I would probably would have given it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy three, I was pretty desperate. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to you. Decided to run for city council. Yes. 
And why? Well, I was recruited to run for oh, it. Uh, for that's, sure. that's, I'm sorry. That's true. That's true. <laughs> by um, by my my campaign manager Lisa Gurovitz. Um, I know Lisa very well. Yeah, she's phenomenal. Phenomenal. She, I, I, she is. She is very good. She is really knowledgeable. She's really dedicated to her causes. Yes. So very yeah. Good, yeah. And so um, she had reached out to me after seeing some of the advocacy I'd been doing at the school board level. Um, I'm uh, My kids, um, well, I have one daughter that's at Aliso Elementary School. She's in third grade. And then I have a daughter at the middle school in sixth grade. And so last year, um, there was some issues that were coming up at Aliso um, with some of the personnel there, administrative decisions. And I was president of the PTA, and I am again this year um, at Aliso. And so I found myself just really getting activated to really advocate on behalf of Aliso families, teachers, staff. Um, and so I started to go to school board meetings with some of the other uh, PTA uh, parents, mothers, right. uh, all of them, um, and, and just to really put ourselves out there to try to make, make a change. And we were able to make, I think, a really important change that has impacted Aliso very positively. And what um, that change would be? So now the current principal at Aliso is uh, Brett Weiberg. Um, and so his lead, under his leadership, the school is is has really just gone in a, a fantastic direction. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, no, and he's he's just I can't say enough good things about about Brett. He's he's such a great fit for that. School. Oh, fantastic! So. I know I talked a little bit more about what you found about the city council, some of the yeah. issues, not where you stand, but some of the issues coming up and so forth. But uh, hey, you know what? I know this is outside your comfort zone, so we'll just add to that uncomfort aspect. Why don't you tell us our first song? Oh, okay. So the first <laughs> song is a Bon Jovi "Living on a Prayer," and then what's the second one? Uh, Echo and the Bunnymen. I don't know the name. The Killing Moon. The Killing Moon. <sighs> yes. All right, take Good two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> All right, let's hit it, Dennis. Rock and roll, y'all. Carpenteria Valley Radio. Lunch Truck Radio. This is Brian. And I'm on CarpenteriaValleyRadio.com, and we're with council member Monica Solorsno. How was that? That was perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> getting on. there, getting there. Man, you know, that I, have, I haven't heard that since my honeymoon. <laughs> so, okay, so we are talking because when we're, when we're listening to music, you know, guys, listen to music, it's not like we just sit here in silence. And Monica was saying what a pleasure it was coming in with our very first year of having districts. And can you explain yeah, the why? Right. And so I think that it's been a big change for, for the city, but being able to be in that first round of, of district elected leadership it it really to me made me feel like i was a part of something that was a movement towards more inclusion equity and representation and i understand that there are definitely people who who feel differently they feel like there should just be one carpentry and that you know the representatives represent all of carp and to some extent that's true but then also the the whole idea of districts trying to make sure that nobody is left out of the conversation is something that is so so important to me and so it, it just it was the timing was perfect for me to get involved for the first time in in elected office at a time when this really big and and critical change was happening fantastic and your district runs from where to where yeah, so the um, it runs from the the Carpentria uh, Avenue off ramp um, all the way down um, towards. Uh, it doesn't get to Linden; it stops before Linden, and then it curves down towards the the beach neighborhood. So I I do have the Salt Marsh, that whole neighborhood right there, right adjacent to the Salt Marsh, and then um, the the State Beach is technically in in uh, that that area right there too, and then Linden Field, and it stops there. So Island Brewery is not in, in my, <laughs> in my that's kind of a landmark. Uh. That, that uh, I always think of to show that is stops. now, but, yeah. you, but you do have the spot. Uh, yes, okay. I do have this. Yes, absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. And what are the issues you're finding in in this district? Yeah, well, so one of the really neat things about running is that um, I I wanted to go door to door, right, and and to just have and that you did. experience, and I did. And so I went, and my my dad went with me um, every single weekend. Um, my dad, uh, Ron Solorsano uh, of the Youngsters, the local band. Yes, um, <laughs> I have to put Wait, a plug in for time him. Out. Hey, we've had two. <laughs> That's the second member of the uh, of the youngsters. That's Dave. Right. That's Are right. you Ron? Yes. I've been yes. having beer with your dad <laughs> at Brew Lab <laughs> for a long time. Did yeah. you even know? No, I didn't even know. <laughs> and, and, okay, is this okay? I'm, I'm now we're getting off. I'm sorry. Just, we're going to make this a very personal show here. Is he also in Mestizo? Yes, he is. That's yes, Ron. Yeah, oh yeah. my God. I'm, yeah. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Let's get back. So and, yeah, well, yeah. Sorry. Um, so he he went with me, and so as you can imagine, as as the leader of two bands, he's very very personable he's 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 great at at connecting with people he loves talking to people so 
Uh, I'm a little bit more introverted myself, so right. having him with me um, was was wonderful. And then my daughters went with me, so Eileen, uh, who is 12, and Araceli, who's nine, uh, and so they went with me oh, every single time. My mom joined in a couple times. Uh, Lisa, my campaign manager, joined in a few times, um, but for, for the most part, it was the the four of us. Uh, well, that's and good; they can see the family. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, so in going door to door, you know, we, it was really important to ask people what was important to them, and what was interesting. A lot of people were just very. Um, happy to be in CARP, right? It, it right. just whether we were going through, you know, the, the beach neighborhood or some of the the trailer parks in the area or some of the the um, townhouse um, um, structures. I mean, that was a, a thread for sure. Going through all that is that people feel very happy to be here, and so they would start off with that, and then they'd move into some of the concerns. Um, and you know, a lot of concerns in this area, in that area, and it makes sense, have to do with um, uh, pedestrian safety. And so, because a lot of people are going back and forth across Carp Avenue, um, especially over in that that uh, the row area by, by Brew Lab and, and such. So, you know, concerns with crosswalks. At least since Aliso is there, um, you know, there there people wanted to make sure that there's there's safety that's going on um, with that. Uh, with the beach neighborhood, uh, a lot of the issues had to do after the January storms with the, you know some the, of the, the the truck traffic. Uh, yeah, on, the on sediment ash. deposition, right. and now they're salt marsh dredging. And can I ask you a question? Because I get asked this because I live close to your estuary. Yes. I can see it from if I climb on top of the roof. Um, what is the purpose? I think I know. A, I think I know the purpose, but what is the purpose of the dredging? Well, and so that's basically so that if there is another major weather event, if, there, if there's not a backlog of materials Sediment, in material. there. Oh, yeah. I was right. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope I'm, I'm right. I think I'm right. Yeah, no, I think you are. <laughs> I might Thank have you. to double check because at I, City Hall. Because I figured that was it with the last storms. Tons and tons and tons of silt and dirt yeah. from the hills came down and settled, and that would get not what you're basically doing is allowing the estuary to be back to its normal depths right. in the areas. Yeah. So we have good flow of in and out. And of course, another storm coming in next year, it'll have the water and debris, which will be there, will have a place to go and won't back up. I've, yeah, gone, out, I've gone out there a few times since they announced this as, as an emergency operation, but it doesn't look like an emergency. You, you, you seldom ever really see anything going on. There might be a crane way off in the distance or, or some piece of heavy equipment. So it's kind of a... I don't know the technicalities of it all, but, uh, but I assume it's getting done because things are marked off and stuff. Yeah, and I mean, that's one of the interesting things going forward after the, these January storms is because the, the sediment deposition, it's a county project, right? County, Santa right. Barbara County okay. Flood Control. Mm-hmm. So, and, and they have been operating on emergency permits every year that or every time that they're there is this issue with needing to move sediment from the debris basins. Um, and so the idea, the hope is to, going forward, to find a way to have a permanent permit <laughs> right up, which which entails a lot more um analysis of the operation you know with the, the you know the soil and the beach and all that and and just puts i think more parameters in place and gives more public information to to folks to residents about what is actually going on there so i think that's the goal the long-term goal is for there to be that permanent uh, yeah permit, i know aaron make aaron maker said that too. yes yes, yes. yes. She's, you know, oh, yeah. every, I, I have a feeling everybody at city hall is on board with that <laughs> because it is kind of ad hoc if you go year by year by year because right. it's by emergency because and i think the citizens have a legitimate concern right exactly um yes. in the old carpenteria i i've been i can't imagine carpenteria being you know not doing anything really bad on purpose corruption they, they do follow the guidelines that right. are already set yes and, but it would be i know aaron mentioned that um we're talking to her that she run that as a right. priority Yes. Because I think this will be part of our global change, climate-wise. Right. Uh, we'll be coming more and more of these weather systems. Mm-hmm. Um, un- un- unpredictable and heavier right. storm flow. And we've done pretty well. We've come up pretty well in this community uh, when it came to the floods and right. fires, uh, yeah. which kind of surrounded us. And like Thomas Fire kind of mm-hmm. went around us. And I know the floods, especially this time, were pretty well handled. Yeah, and I think it's interesting with the Thomas Fire and with these floods, the fact that carpentry can get shut off on both sides of the 101, I mean, that's something that is so, I think it's uh, frightening, right, to think about. And so having these these resources to try to prevent that, even though in the short term, or not even, it feels maybe medium term, it's it can be really frustrating to have like the trucks and to have the, the beach looking a little bit disheveled for a while. Um, it's it's so important to, to protect right. Our city going forward. And that means that everybody out there should have their 
earthquake kit slash disaster right. kit yes, handy. It would be good true. for several days. Right. You know, yeah. 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 Listen, exactly. everybody. <laughs> so. No season for earthquakes. That's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, I have a good earthquake kit in my car. Part of it is a bottle, a bottle of bourbon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I have this fantasy. And, and there's nothing else. Really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dolphin shorts. <laughs> I have this fantasy, basically, that I'll be stuck between two collapsed bridges, <laughs> and everything will be okay, so I have a full set, plus bourbon. There you go. <laughs> I'm good, officer. You fix your wounds, you make Nobody happy. Nobody needs me at home, I'm good. Yeah. Drop, drop another bottle of bourbon, please. <laughs> but you know, that never happens. No. No, yeah. that's just, things like that just... It, Happens. I have to wait to see when it happens to see if you get that. Yeah, yeah well, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll give you a call. Hey, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Nine point two. That's not bad. No. You know, it came out. Um, how is City Hall working for you? Uh, I, it's it's such a great environment to to be working in. I can't say enough about the staff there. They're just phenomenal. It's been a real learning curve for me to to familiarize myself with all you know public works projects and community development and just everybody, all of the the workers there from the the directors you know all the way throughout the whole building. Are, they're just phenomenal. They've been so accessible and just so knowledgeable and and helpful. And that starts with Dave Durfinger. Yeah, Dave said the same thing. About- his staff, though he said the same yes, thing. Yes, yes, he did. So, so I've just been really appreciative about that. It's it's helped me feel like I can um, find out what I need to find out in a way that's that's really easy, which, right. which feels good. Do you have any goals for your district? Well, I really want to. What my main goal is is really community outreach and engagement. And to that point, uh, uh, last Saturday um, I held in conjunction with with um, Natalia Alarcon, the vice mayor, who is in District Two. Uh, we held a uh, an event at Aliso Elementary School. Um, together we thrive. Together we thrive. Yes. Exactly. And so the the purpose of it was to bring together a lot of different um, organizations that can push out information to the community, uh, whether it was about you know rent me- mediation. Um, um, opportunities through the county or, you know, the, um, gosh, uh, there was the public works came, there were, um, the library was there, there, there were just, there were so many. Lisa different... was there. Yes, exactly. And so, so, um, the, and we, you know, we had food and we had music and, and um, again, the your principal, Brett Weiberg was there. He, he was yeah. very helpful and because that's, his, you know, his community too. And so, um, you know, we, they, we didn't have as much attendance as we would have liked and I'm, it might have been a timing issue too. But um, so I'm learning from that so that for the next time, you know, we can maybe start a little bit later in the day or pick a yeah. location with a little more foot traffic. But but that's that's the idea yeah. of what I want to do. Rarely does the first time ever go off without a hitch. I mean, that's that's the learning curve. That really, yeah. really is. So yeah. no, I, I was there and it was good. Yeah. It was a lot of good organizations, yeah. and it, the out, you know, it was kind of a not as many people in the neighborhood attended as, as should have. Yeah. But I think next year we'll get the you'll get the uh, out the word out earlier and more effectively. Yeah. And maybe a better sting what the mission is because the groups there were really helpful. And yes. again, we've mentioned about this community, and I think you'll agree. There's a lot of really great groups. Yes. You know, Absolutely. Maybe more so per capita mm-hmm. than other communities. Now, yeah. the, these are going to get, take place in other districts, I understand. These same kind of events. So those districts can be learning from this event exactly. as well. Exactly. And really, I mean, it was the event was open to anybody. Yes. It, for sure, it absolutely was. But the idea was that it, because of the location of it, it was a little bit more geared towards District 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And so, no, I'm already thinking ahead, you know, District 1 and 5. I was thinking, you know, Linden Field might be a good location for that because it's yeah. right on the border of those two districts. And so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking ahead to how I can really further that idea of, of involvement, inclusion, um, for for my my constituents, yeah, and so your constituents, you, they are your main concern, obviously. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and you have it. Um, have you found that uh, businesses are coming to you? Are you finding you know? Do you find that our, our regulations are onerous when it comes to business? Uh, there have been some businesses that have come to me to talk about about concerns that they have and i that's always it's helpful because that isn't my world my background is not is not in in business um so so that's been yeah that and i mean i think that it's something where having that open dialogue with with city staff has been really helpful because then i can get the answers or the feedback that i need 
to engage with the people that are asking me the questions. And even if it's not always the answer that, that they, they would want, at least I can be the conduit for, for information about that. Because, yeah, I do hear concerns um, when it comes to, like, the, you know, how long some of the permitting processes take right. and, and that type of thing. Obviously, you know, there are other issues like the parklets that are, you know, that are um, coming, com- that we're going through right now. So there's a lot of, lot of business. What is happening with the parklets? Well, I mean, we're at a point now where, you know, they were put up under emergency COVID uh, times. And, and now there's just, there's a lot of regulation that, that has to happen in order to make sure that they're safe and that, you know, they're, they protect the people that are there. And, and so Carpentry, uh, the city is, is trying to make sure that those, those safety measures are in place. Um, but it's, it's hard because there are some existing parklets that have, have been there all, for the last couple of years that, that, and it's worked out really well and people really enjoy them. Diners enjoy them, businesses enjoy them. Um, but it's it, we're just I think we're at a point now, and, and other cities too, Santa Barbara and Ventura, at a point where um, we really just have to figure out how we can transition from these emergency structures to structures that are more, um, to, more or to, right. But to keep the park there, yes, right, right, right. right. I, I personally like them. I, I do. I enjoy them Me sitting too. outside. Yeah. Um, but I guess also there's kind of a hodgepodge look to them. I think I know I've heard that before from other people. Mm. That's kind of a distraction. Yeah. Uh, but again, then we don't want to. When we talk about Los Angeles, mm. uh, you don't want to also put the cost on a business owner where. That could almost drive them out of business. Right. And that's why the city is looking to, to find ways. Um, they have a plan to subsidize some of the, the new uh, options for parklets going forward. So it doesn't, the cost doesn't have to fall on businesses completely. Have you found being uh, on the city council has taken up, and it sounds like willingly, you're not minding, but more time than you realize? Did you, re- did you go in thinking it'll be X and now it's X squared? Um, no, you know, the the extra time really is, is the different committees, you know, that to be on, and not just the city ones, but I'm on uh, the board now for MTD, which is really interesting and just, it's it's fascinating learning about okay, the inner workings time out. of that. <laughs> That's, MTD is really fascinating. Yes. Oh, wow. If you are a policy <laughs> wonk. <laughs> um, anything, almost, almost hey, anything hey, there's, there's, can- there's nerds for everything, <laughs> yeah. okay? It really is, yeah. you know. That's okay. <laughs> You must read your instructions when you put together something. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's the, that's the one time I don't. I get impatient with that type of thing. But when it comes to learning yeah. things like like issues and and just different worlds, that that is something that's okay. interesting. Honestly, well, because MTD is a, a a big presence in our community, with transportation mm-hmm. to work to yes. uh, to Santa Barbara and back. What's what do you find interesting? What's going on with MTD? Well, they they are opening up a new uh, bus route this fall. That's gonna that's meant to service uh, Carpentria up to Santa Barbara City College, and so it's going to be the nine the line nineteen. It's an express line that's going to go um, pick up a, at a couple stops in Carp, then go I think to just one or two stops in, on the east side in in Santa Barbara, and then end at City College. The idea being that hopefully it can be um, it can allow people. Carpentrians to get up to City College or into that general area in a way that they weren't able to access before. That's the, such a good idea. Yeah, yeah so so that's like that. that's been something that's been been really um, interesting to kind of see how that developed and just um, how it works into their their MTD's whole plan going forward. Right. So you're now you're getting into the logistics. Yeah. And you like that? Yes, I like that. But so, but that's an example of a committee that it meets outside of you know obviously uh, any right. other city council meetings. So. All of those extra committees, that's the part that's hard. It's because it's hard to be in two places at once since I, I also have my, my full-time day job. Right. right, and a family. And a family, yeah. yeah. So it's it's just, yeah, if I could if right. I could transport, <laughs> you know, much easier, then I think it would be perfect. But Yeah, right. that would actually be good. I think it would be a popular line. You know, I would use it because I like City College. I like you running the stairs. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, you know. <laughs> Dennis just laughs. <laughs> I've imagined running those stairs so many times. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Dennis no. is like looking at my stomach like, yeah, you don't run those fucking yeah, stairs. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> don't lie. You're going to start running those stairs. I see all the, you know, the easy way there. There you go. Escalator. <laughs> you know, running five steps is still running the stairs, Dennis. I'll have you know. <laughs> Thank you. I and what's so. been the uh, what's been the biggest surprise about being on your city council? Um, the biggest surprise. Let's let me think. Well, um, hmm. I think that just the the amount of different topics that are under the city's purview in some way or another right. that that has been 
a surprise. I mean, I expected that there would be a lot of things that I, I you know, wasn't aware fall under the the city umbrella, but it still has been a surprise. But it's been a neat surprise. You know, kind of thinking like, oh wow, so that's also something. I mean, now you know, obviously the library is a city library now, right? So it's been right. really neat oh, that's right. to to be kind of witness that as it's it's coming. You know, the librarian Jody is is so so dedicated to community uh, you know presence for the library and so that it's been so fun to work with her um on on some of the events that that we've been doing and everything you know libraries because my neighbor gabby oh, is yeah. on i think she's on the board uh and i find libraries bring out a lot of passionate people yes no and, absolutely you know i always have and perhaps maybe because there was a time a few years ago not that long ago when libraries were not were, weren't being funded weren't considered important aspects to the community and were being defunded and the community stood up and I think there's a lot of passion to that yeah. and you get to see that right and actually I, I know I had mentioned to you earlier that my brother is the head librarian up in Ojai oh yes so, oh, yeah, wow. my brother Ron so I feel like I, I'm, I benefit from his experience kind of second hand I, I hear a lot about what, what issues that he, he deals with the, and how does he like it there. oh he's, he's great he's, he's perfect for that job <laughs> well, what does that make him perfect I'm curious now what makes a <laughs> librarian perfect for the job um, i think somebody who who loves learning who is a, he's a good communicator he's very um uh, considerate and, and kind yeah. of reflective about things um, and here it's jody I, I can't think of a more perfect person yeah, no, it's and like Jack. the heavens opened and gave us this <laughs> uh, unbelievable uh, librarian yeah, yeah. Really. and our staff too you know yes. Yes. here we go staff is so important yes yeah eric and jenna and then um, holden i think is the newest yes. member um and th- no they're it's just it's when you have people like that who are so determined to right. to to bring people into the fold, it, it makes everything feel so much more positive. And for the listeners out there, as Monica is expressing her opinions and showing, she, her eyes are lighting up. This is, I mean, she's real passionate about this. This is coming from her heart. This is, there's no script. There isn't a tra- tra- teleprompter be, you know, in front of her. You know. I wish there were. <laughs> no, you're doing good. You're doing good. So you know what? It's time to get out of your comfort zone. That's right, because you're going to the next two songs, and they are. This is the paper I wrote down. Ah, go ahead. Okay, um, so we have, oh, you too. Sometimes you can't make it on your own. Great tune. And, and then and then Bob Dylan, I shall be released. And this is Brian's Lunch Truck Radio, Carpenter Valley Radio.com. Hit it, Dennis. All right. Hey, this is Brian. We're back. Brian's Lunch Truck Radio, Carpenter Valley Radio.com. And that was uh you two. Sometimes we can't make it up oh, wow, on your own. And Bob Dylan, I shall be released. Both really good songs. Yeah. And you're a big U2 fan. Yes. Yeah, well, all the songs that I chose, I mean, I've seen them all in concert. Bon Jovi, U2, uh, Bob Dylan, Neil Young. Um, I just, it's so, It's. I was just telling you, it's so great to hear them just unexpectedly like this. Oh, it's kind know? of, oh, good. That's what made <laughs> yeah. me fun. U2 is great life. They're the oh, bedrock. They're the all those knowledge. bands. All yeah. those bands. Yeah, I've never seen Neil Young. I haven't seen Bob Dylan. Oh. Yeah. It, even now, I would I would recommend it. All right. you know, I want to see Neil Young. I uh, like Neil Young. Uh, Neil is only four years younger than Bob, <laughs> 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 and uh, and still got it. Still brings it. But but he's yes. very soured on you know all the Ticketmaster and the and you know he he's the one guy left. He's the last holdout mm-hmm. who cares about his fans. Right. And 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 giving and putting them first I before profits. His songs are not for sale. You I will agree not hear with them in you. commercials. You know, I agree with you. One hundred. He's the last one. You know, it, it isn't right. Well, you know, it just isn't. There's no reason why a ticket should cost a thousand dollars. No, I. I, no, I mean, not one reason. Yeah, there really yeah. isn't. I just gouging to my. Brain. He even says the big tours are over for that reason. It's like mm. now it's an elitist thing. You, right. you have to have money to just go to a concert like you used to be able to do all the time. Well, so. even Coachella, which is a really, a, I would say, and it has been like a people's concert festival, you know, kind of the out, outsider festival. Now you have huge sponsor corporations, yep. you have people yep. you know, renting rooms for all three days, limo drivers coming in, helico- helicoptering in. It's, I guess that's just the name of the game. It does happen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, no safeguards. And we want that to happen to this radio station, this show. We just want to become huge. <laughs> yes. Where I can helicopter my four feet. <laughs> yeah. Big crowd out back here. Really, oh, yeah. is that really yeah. Brian? <laughs> That'll never happen. <laughs> like the Today Show. They'll be behind the window. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look. Oh, look. It's Brian. <laughs> I'd have to hire them. <laughs> like, ah, that's Brian. That's Brian with a Y. <laughs> Uh, we're here with Monica Solorzano. Monica Solorzano. Oh, Solorzano. Oh, God, I, no, I, I apologize. You regressed. You regressed. I did regress. Okay. I did regress. My God. Um, real quick, 
what are your what are your hopes for Carpinteria? Um, my hopes for Carpinteria. Well, let's see. I think that part of my hopes for Carpinteria are knowing what everybody's hopes are as much so that this can the community can still be as much what have as much about it that people love right now because like I said when we were walking the districts when I was campaigning that was just something that overwhelmingly came through is that people love being able to be here right and I mean it's very hard to live here right it's very hard to to work here but um but people the people that are here really love it and so I think that I I it's so important to me to actually hear from people what they want and what they think and I think that that's something that really shapes what what I want for carpentry so you know (laughs) measured growth and development nothing you know trying to maintain as much of the the character as we can yeah. while also being aware that there you know some some growth is necessary especially with, with some housing issues that that you know as everybody knows about um so so yeah so i think that I did, as much feedback as i can get helps to determine and really well, inform what i think for the I'll, future on that development side i'm not i'm not asking you to give your opinion on it, but what's going on with what's going on with tea time? <laughs> I've been asked that for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> guy, guy wants to put a uh, hotel quote farm experience up there where the golf uh, driving range is now. Yeah, and I know we've seen there have been some plans that yeah. have been that have been shared and that were um, over at City Hall. Uh, but yeah, so I, I I don't have a lot of information uh, other than that about about that yet. Um, but I've never I've never used the tea time space myself, so I'm not sure. You know, you've never had an afternoon out with a pitcher of margaritas, <laughs> a golf club, a, a little white ball, knocking a little hole, like walk five feet. Really, you don't know what life is. So, I yeah, I, I they. Agree. I was offered to go on a Mount Everest expedition. I said no. <laughs> I'm gonna make a pitcher of margaritas, get my golf club. <laughs> I only have one golf club, and I only have one golf ball. And I'm gonna go out the tea time and like, go ahead, have an adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> People do it for different reasons. Okay, yeah. it's, re- yeah. it's relaxing. So yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, hitting that little ball is relaxing. <laughs> no, if you could hit it, like yeah. you know, if I swing eight times, I. Mm. I miss six. <laughs> That's not too bad. That's not oh, See, you are a good mom and a good counselor. <laughs> you got my vote just for that alone. Excellent. <laughs> and now, and you see, we I know your hopes. You mentioned some of the challenges that we face as a community. Mm-hmm. And what do you think are some of the challenges we face? Well, I mean, housing is a big one, um, and partly that's you know, because of some of the state mandates for housing. But it also is because you know, affordable housing, workforce housing, it is an issue in CARB, and it, it's a really hard one to, to to tackle for sure. And that's why you know, with the housing element that's been going working its way through um, city city uh, city hall right now, it's 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 neat. It's great to see the different. Um, approaches whether it's ADUs and J ADUs yeah. that 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 are really you know hopefully going to be catching fire. People are already making applications for them. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and um, or or looking at um, you know infill of some of the the existing um, structures that are there. But just there's a lot of different prongs to the right. <laughs> to the to right. the, the, the attack. Um, to, to address the issue. And the JADU is? The junior ADU. So and it's a smaller, smaller ADU. Okay, and that's limited by its square footage yes. or height. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Okay. Or both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there, and then, I mean, another really big issue is, is I mean, the effects of climate change and beach erosion. And, you know, that's some, I'm on the, the beacon. I was talking about other committees that yeah. I'm on and the ones that, that kind of take up extra time. Is, so beacon, the beach erosion, it's a, the regional committee. Um, and that has been something that is, it's really continued to to bring home to me how how impactful that issue is and and how that's something that really you know carp has to plan for going forward because you know it's only with, with the effects of climate change are are very real and they're only going to get more uh, intense do you deal with the agricultural community here, about community here and the effects of climate change you know that's that has not been a really part yet part of my my experience uh, i'm sure it will be but it hasn't it hasn't been up to now do you feel that we're addressing as a city the uh, the potential for the effects of climate change um well i think that you know if, to some extent you know there was just the plan um the um the living shoreline plan that that was ad- uh, adopted by by the city council before i came on board that that is is specifically looking at managing the beach and just different ways to protect the the sand that we have right now and part of the beach nourishment kind of goes back uh, loops back over to when we we're talking about the sediment uh, 
uh, deposits after the January storm. Because one thing that I think people probably understand much more now than they did before is that the debris basins that are catching that sediment that's coming down through the rains, that sediment that normally would make its way to the beach naturally, right? right. So when it doesn't go there, it's, it, it starves the beach. And so between that and then beach erosion that's happening, then it, it ends up being part of the right. reason the beach is shrinking. And so I think that that's something that, you know, that that sediment deposition is is key to to preserving the beach so that we can continue enjoying well, it. Well, that's because that's the draw here. One of the draws right, of, exactly. of this area. Yeah. Of this area. Um, talk about the benefits and the drawbacks of tourism. Yeah, I mean, the benefits, obviously, you know, economically, it's 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 something that's so important to, to CARP and, and to, you know, sales tax and, and, and all that. Um, I think that, you know, the, the difficulties are, I think some of it is the whole concept of the, um, the uh, 80, uh, not, what is the... Uh, vacation rentals? Yes. <laughs> I yes, couldn't think right. of the word. There's so many acronyms. The RBOs, uh, Airbnbs. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, Airb- yeah, yeah, Airbnbs and all. Oh, short-term rentals. Yeah, yeah. short-term rentals. 4297 units, $250 a week. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is second, the second homes, the short-term rentals, I think that that's something, you know, that it's obviously become an increasingly um, big issue uh, going forward. And I think that that's, it, it's so intertwined with issues of, of housing that we've talked about before. Um, that, uh, that 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 is a real challenge. So I think that, that the positives of tourism are, are, are really, really big for CARP. Um, you just look at things like the Avocado Festival and even you know, Surf and Suds and some of those. That I mean, people really want to, to right. come here as a destination yes. for around either events or just around the beach itself and, and the community itself. But, um, but it also, you know, it, it has opened up CARP, I think, more to, to people who want to be able to generate their own and is there a minimum time limit for a rental um i'm think, not sure about that i, I think I it's 31 to... days okay i, I yeah, think i, I don't mean it sorry i hope I didn't mean it, it, <laughs> it seems to days. change a lot it, it, all the communities around here it, deal with this issue but y- your question reflects it's like those those rules seem to change every so often as to they what's allowed what isn't how long and, yeah right yeah because yeah. yeah. our units next to us are 31 days Mm-hmm. Minimum, mm-hmm. so they go for two to three months. That's okay. why, because that's you'll get somebody in there for two weeks, right. that's, and that's in a regulated area of the community within right. a certain distance from the beach. Yes. But past yeah. that, right. without that, we the, that you would have the same issues that those people have, some good or bad income coming in, traffic, mm-hmm. you know, good right. and bad. Uh, ours is more, um, I would say, for this for our town is more. Um, not giving any rental relief. Mm-hmm. In other words, these things are going for quite a right. bit more yes. per month. Yes. And that does not help. Hey, is that me or you? <laughs> Oh. I hope it wasn't me. Oh, it was you. <laughs> was oh, me. ding. Oh, phone. Amateur. Time's up. Amateur Time's up. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's okay. But that's one of the things I found is is we're not getting any relief rent wise mm-hmm. yes. at all. At all, yeah. and I don't know if the I don't know if that could be addressed. Yeah, it'd yeah. be nice if it just even went sideways for a while instead of up, 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 up. Oh. Yeah, it has, yeah, yeah, just you know, I believe two months ago there was three complete units, condo mm-hmm. apartment for rent in this town. Three, I believe so. Count them three. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, which is amazing. I mean, yeah. Which is, if you live here and you own mm-hmm. for a while. Okay, you kind of go okay, but you also I know a lot of people who can't afford to right. live here. Yes. Again, we've talked about this, with Dave. Mm-hmm. Like this. It's kind of a problem that's ongoing yeah. that might not have a and won't have a simple solution. Exactly. Yeah. And that comes to housing. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it comes right back around to it. And that yes. means the city council will have to do something, a vote on it that won't please everybody. No, definitely not. Well, and that's something that I think is is. Um, it's been interesting just to hear people who get in touch with the council members by either public comment or by emailing. I, I do really appreciate getting that, that, that feedback, but I also want to find better ways to get feedback from people who are not engaging in those ways, right? Who, who maybe are not able to be online as much or, or who don't, aren't, don't have the time or the, the ability to get to city council meetings. So that's something I'm thinking about. I want to find a, oh, that's a, interesting. a way, a way, a, a way to get that, that kind of intrinsic engagement a little bit more in my district for starters. So you want, you want to get a fuller picture yes, of, of exactly. your constituents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, going door to door was definitely part of that and that was helpful, but I just, I want to find a way to have 
uh, to be able to get that that feedback in a you know a right. more nimble way. Yeah, and that's that's I, mean, I haven't heard that from anybody before. That's good. I think it's fantastic because a lot of people out there, you can have two, three kids. You can be, you know, have right. be a one bedroom. Yes. Uh, what can I do? What's the future here hold for me? You know, what do you think mm-hmm. will happen? Right. Uh, that'll guide you on your policies. Yes. You know, exactly. uh, it's policies again. I'm going to mention that you can't please all the people all the time, right. as yeah. you well know. Mm-hmm. And how do you like being on in front of people on Mondays? <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, again, um, I'm, I'm, the public I'm definitely, comment time. yeah, I'm, I'm not naturally an ex- extroverted person, so it's, it's taken some time to find my sea legs with yeah. that. But I mean, the, the other council members are, are really, really welcoming and have been really supportive. And, and, um, I mentioned already city staff has just been just so, so dynamic. Um, so I, I feel like I'm armed with the right information to be able to make decisions. Um, and, uh, and it feels like it's a, it's a good, a friendly, friendly group on, on the dais to encourage participation. I've noticed that. Yeah. I've never know. I haven't ever felt any bitterness mm-hmm. among the council members at all. Yeah, well, I, I, I just you know. looking at some of the other. I, I watched some other city council meetings, you know, from some other other lo- right. local cities or. Is that a hobby of yours? Field. No, no, <laughs> it's mostly for research. Wow. <laughs> like, and and yes, I mean, I've definitely witnessed some balances of councils that are really contentious and that are just. And I just think that that would that would just make it such a. a, a difficult and draining experience and we don't we don't have that and this your city council terms term runs for how long for four years wow yes, great so I just, just you know and i what i've learned uh, out of this is and maybe your constituents know or don't know how lucky they are you're like a secret weapon in terms of dealing with other jurisdictions. Mm-hmm. You talk about the salt marsh, that's the county. You've got that bike path thing going on right. up there, so you're dealing with Caltrans. Right. You're on the MTD. Uh, that is such a huge um, thing to have going for you, that, that you, you work with the other jurisdictions well. It's kind of like a behind-the-scenes thing that's extremely important. Well, and that's what's been something that's been so interesting is finding out how how all of that overlaps because before I, I joined the council I didn't know there was you know I, mean, I probably knew there was an MTD board but I didn't really ever really think about it or you know the beach, the beach erosion group I, I mean these are entities that are doing important work or that are impacting us that the average person including right. myself wouldn't wouldn't know about you know again that's kind of the what's the behind the scenes things and we we look at things like oh my god we should do this we should do that then when you get into the driver's seat you realize it's not that simple, right? right. Yeah. You know, and it might not be that simple just due to state laws, right? And regulations exactly. beyond your yes. anything beyond yeah. your control. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, have you been pleasantly surprised by how much you've enjoyed doing it? Because it sounds like you really enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I absolutely have been pleasantly surprised. I I thought that it would be a which it is a challenge, and that it would be um, difficult. And I was I was up for that. I was ready for that. But I I truly didn't realize how how um, how enjoyable it would be just to to really dig into some of these issues and and to work with with people and, and even people you know people like you meeting people yeah, like you and, even people like you. <laughs> I say even in the sense of outside of just even, the city council. Even, even you, <laughs> badge of honor. Oh boy. I'm sorry. I just cracks me up. Uh, Even yeah. you. Especially voting. you. Voting. Especially you, vote? you. you know, I don't vote. <laughs> <laughs> I always vote. <laughs> I'm always amazed how many people... I think more people are getting involved now in the last 15 years than they have before. I'm hoping. Yeah. You know, especially in local local um, elections. Mm-hmm. It's very important. They seem mundane, but it is important. Right. You're yeah, actually, that's the best voice you have right now. Yeah. You're, you're involved you're, locally. Uh, for everybody out there, our council members are our first voice. They're yep. the ones that most... That you will know. get the most done that you will see the direct results of if you get involved locally. Yeah. I mean, once it gets past a certain level, you, you, I don't blame people for feeling powerless right. You know, for the way things are going. But at the local level, you know who it is and what you're voting for. Yeah, 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 and what a pleasure having you here. I think we're almost all the time. Big time. Oh, yeah, God. and that means I don't have to say your name anymore. <laughs> After one morning, I'll, I'll quiz you periodically. You know, I'll, just I'll get these call call, I'll get these calls at yeah. two in the morning. Pronounce my name, <laughs> Monica. Solorsano. Monica Solorsano. Solorsano. Yep, yes, Solorsano. Monica Solorsano. Okay. Monica Solorsano. You're, you're battling years of 
have it here. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I will so screw okay. it up again, but at least I got that one right. <laughs> so, Monica, what's up next for our music? Uh, so we have uh, Neil Young, Powderfinger, one of the greatest Bam. songs of all time. Oh, yes. Ever, ever. Yeah. And, and then uh, Feist, My Moon, My Man. I think we're... That's, that's pretty cool stuff right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, this has been Brian's... Thank you, Monica. Radio. Oh, shut up, Dennis. I'm talking. Monica. <laughs> Monica. Monica. I'm just going... You know, I'm just going change my name to that monica moots monica moots <laughs> okay we're getting really goofy here obviously yeah, yeah. um it was hit the music brian's Less truck radio thank you monica thank oh you. if you missed Everything. any part of the show it will be repeated tomorrow evening at five and tuesday at five right here on carpentry valley radio part. I yeah, yeah, but i don't that. no and that's that's why you're the boss <laughs> i'm the guy that like takes off an airplane i forgot to shut that door <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. Thank Brian's Lunch Truck Radio, CarpentryValleyRadio.com. Have a fantastic Thursday afternoon, and we'll be back next Thursday. Bam! Tune in for Brian's Lunch Truck every Thursday at noon Pacific at CarpentryValleyRadio.com.